Good morning, church. Good morning. Our Father and our God, we bow and we worship you. We come before you in truth and in spirit, mm -hmm. with a heart full of gratitude, with a heart full of thanks, with a heart full of praise and worship. We've come to exalt you, to bless your holy name. We've come to exalt your name because you're the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You're the mm -hmm. young that I am. You're unchangeable changer. But are you the same yesterday, today, and forever morning? You're the God that says yes and no one can say no. But are you the God that has created us, oh God, and no one can take away our life in the name of Jesus? Mm -hmm. But I will just thank you because you're the master of the universe. You're the creator of the universe in the name of Jesus. But I will thank you because we stand upon the solid form foundation that will never fail. We stand mm -hmm. upon a foundation that is built upon Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. We stand upon a foundation that will never be shaken. For we know Christ is our pillar mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, for that we say thank you. For that we worship you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I present myself to you this moment, O God. Father, use me as your humble servant. Take preeminent and give me utterance mm -hmm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you glory, I give you worship, and I give you adoration. Let your name be glorified. Father, open every ear this moment, every heart, that they should hear and understand your word. Father, as your word come forth, my Father, my God, may you bless every word that come forth. Father, every ear, every heart that will catch your word this morning, oh God, sweet Holy Spirit, may you magnify. Manifest, manifest, manifest yourself in their life in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' mighty and anointed name, we pray. Mm -hmm. Amen and amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Today is the second last Sunday of the year 2014, and we are all privileged to be here because God has ordained us to be here at this moment. Next few days we're going to be experiencing the bed of Christ we're going to we're going to enjoy his presence we're going to know the reason why Christ came to this earth for the reason that's why we are celebrating this season without that reason this season will not be existing there's so many people just celebrate the season without the reason and I'm sure we are not those of one of those who celebrate the season without the reason we are here because we know the reason why Christ went upon the cross of Calvary we are here because we know the reason why we are standing here present we know the reason and we are celebrating the season with the reason amen, amen. this month we've been dealing with I am fulfilled in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Fulfillment in Christ Jesus. Last week we talked a lot about fulfillment in Christ Jesus. This week we're going to see who I am and what I have become. This is what we're going to be looking at. Who I am and what I have become. If we realize God called himself, I am that I am. That is a statement that defines our Christian life. Because the Bible makes us understand that Christ in God and we in Christ. So we are buried in Christ in God. So when God says, I am who I am, means we are who we are. And to the enemy, to the devil, to the kingdom of darkness, it's a mystery. Because they don't understand the word I am. I am who I am. But the children of God understand it because I am who I am. It's a supreme life. It's a life worthy of significant meaning. It's a life that we live with significance. It's not just a life of wishy-washy. It's not just a life of I am a human being. I exist. We are not just making population in the world. But we are making significance in the world. Our life is a life of supremacy. It's a supreme life. That is why we say who I am and what I have become. When we were in the world, we are living like numbers. When we, when we came to Christ, we begin to live a life of significance. We begin to live a life of quality, a life of abundance, a life of freedom. And when you live a life of significance, 
a life of quality, a life of abundance, then you're fulfilled. Without this, you're not a fulfilled human being. And what embodied the whole of this is Christ Jesus. With Christ Jesus, you're fulfilled and fulfilled in abundance. If we look at it, John 10, 10, the Bible makes us understand that Jesus said, I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. If we look at, at, at John 3, 17, most people like to look at John 3, 16, where it says, for Christ, for God so loved the world that gave his only begotten son. Yes. Now we look at this, the reason why Christ came in John 3, 17. Amen? He said, I have come not to condemn the world. If you are with me, I want you to open to your Bible to John 3:17. He said, I have come not to condemn the world. Because if you look at it, most of us are living a life of condemnation, a life that is not fulfilled because we don't understand what God has done for us. He is not saying that he has come into this world for us to look for our own fulfillment do it possible for us for us to make it possible for us to see Christ to see heaven to see God our creator then he, he says I have come to give life and give it more abundantly and I have not come to condemn the world but to do what to bring everlasting life eternal life Let's just read it all together. He said, God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. God has sent Christ, not to judge us, not to condemn us, but to save us through Christ. What does that mean? What he's telling us is that we can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We have to be saved through Christ. That is what the Bible is telling us. We have to be saved through Christ. And how can we be saved through Christ? By believing in Christ and by having faith in Christ. That God has sent him for a purpose, for a reason, and for this time. And we are honored. We are privileged to be one of them. Who I am. I am Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I'm a spirit being. That is what I have become. How did I become that? When I believe in Christ, when I receive Christ, when I accepted Him as my Lord and Savior. That is what we are talking here today. If you are with me, I want you to also open your Bible to 1 Corinthians 15, 10. Amen? It says that whatever I am now, this is Apostle Paul saying, it is all because God poured out his special favor on me. And now, without result, for I have worked harder than any of the other apostles, yet it was not I, but God who worked through me. By his grace. Apostle Paul is trying to tell us. Because if we all know the story of Apostle Paul. He was a persecutor of the church. He persecuted the follower of Christ. Apostle Paul persecuted the followers of Christ. But God still used him. Still choose him. To be the carrier of the grace message. The message of hope. The message of opportunity. Hallelujah. This is a message. When they say the message of opportunity, what do I mean? It's a message of freedom. Because opportunity comes with freedom. Do you have the opportunity to be free? Because if you have this opportunity to be free, you're not going to live a life of bondage, a life of condemnation. Why do you condemn when you've not been condemned by God? God hasn't condemned you, don't condemn others. It's because you don't, you don't, you've not accepted this of the message of hope. 
the mess of opportunity, if you have accepted it, then you live a life of fulfillment. And this life is a life of supremacy. It's a life of super abundance because Christ said, I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. So as I have, like me myself, I have become and I've received the life of abundance. I have become an abundant person. A person with no lack in any area. In every area I am full. And I believe every child of God, every son and daughters of God, they have to have this life of abundance with them. This supreme life. You have to be supreme above every other creation. Every other special who does not know who they are in Christ Jesus. Any other person who has not accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, you must be supreme over them. And when you are supreme over them, you are supreme in many ways. Christ was supreme over the kingdom of darkness. He was supreme over his enemies. He was supreme ever over sickness. If you are supreme, sickness will fear you. If you are supreme, poverty will fear you. If you are supreme, you will attract great things. That is what we are looking at here today. What I have become. I have become a superwoman. You have become a superman. You have become a superboy because you have Christ living in you. You live a life of great significance. That is who I am. I don't care about what people say, but who are you? What kind of life are you living? For me, I live a life of great significance. And I know all of us here, we are living a life of great significance because we make, we make points. When we come to the body of Christ, when we are out there, we are that kind of, uh, uh, we're supposed to be a role model. That's how we live our life. A role model to the people out there. We're supposed to live a life worthy of people appreciating the God that we serve. We're supposed to live a life worthy of the good and pleasure things of this earth. That is in Christ Jesus. Not the things of the earth that comes from the enemy. But the things of this earth. That somebody is going to look at you and say. Yes truly. God live in this boy. God live in this girl. God live in this man. God live in this woman. That is the kind of life we are supposed to live. We are not just here to make numbers. As I have said before. We are here to make a point. A statement. As significant children of God. We have to make a statement. About our father. We have to make a statement about our identity. That's why we have to know who we are. Who am I? You are Christ. You are Christ. This, the, the, the name, if you look at all everywhere in the Bible, the name that we've been calling God, Yahweh, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, is the name that many people in the Bible give God according to their situation at that particular moment. But the only time God has given himself his name, he gave a name, he said himself a name to Moses. When Moses asked him, who should I tell the people that have sent me? He said, tell them, I am that I am. That is the only time God has given us a name, given his name. So I'm asking you today, who are you? Are you who you are in Christ Jesus? What have you become? Have you become Christ? Like person? It's the spirit of Christ flowing in you. If you look at Galatians 2, Galatians 5 verse 22, you talk about the spirit of God that is in you. And if you look, let's just go back to Galatians. If you look at Galatians 5 verse uh, 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 Galatians 5 verse 22. The fruit of the Spirit. This is what Christ has given us. I have become what Christ has given me. He says, But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our life. Love, joy, peace, passion, kindness, goodness, fruitful, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. There is no law against loving somebody. There is no law against having joy in your mind. There is no law against having peace 
oppression. These are the things that the Holy Spirit has made us to become. As Christ, when you accept Christ, this fruit of the Spirit has to flow through you to show who you are. If you don't have the fruit of the Spirit in you, then you have to ask God to fill you with these things. Because when God fills you with these things, then people will know what you've become. As we read before, Apostle Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians, he talks about who I have become now. Who I have become now. Meaning he was something before, but now he has become something else. What have you become? What were you before now? Are you changing from bad to good or from good to bad? There are so many situations in our life that we are changing from one position to the other. And my prayer for us here today that we are going to move, change from glory to glory to glory to glory. We're not going to degenerate, but we're going to accelerate. That is what we're going to do. Because when we have Christ in us, we know our identity, we know what we become and who we are, then we accelerate. We don't decline. Apostle Paul acknowledged that. And when you begin to acknowledge your present, then your future will be easy for you to move into it. If you don't acknowledge your present, you don't even know your present, you can't even take a step to your future. Because our present is what is leading us to our future. There are so many people. Look at David. David was in the wilderness taking care of the sheep. In Africa, where I come from, they say Garako. David was taking care of the, the cattle. He was a cattle rayer. But he became a king when the finger of God pointed at him. When the hand of God was upon him. And look at what David became. became. Look at what he became. He was not just an ordinary person. He was not just a little boy in their family. He was not just a, a shabby, ragged boy from the, from, the, from, the, from, the, from the forest. But now he became a king with a royal rock. He became a king of honor. A king of significance. Even when David was still a long, young boy, when he went to battle, he defeated Korea. What happened? The women in the city, they recognized the power of God in him. And they begin to cheer, they begin to sing that David has done what so have not done. So David began to live a life of significance. Because when the power of God is upon you, your life will be significant. Look at Joseph. Joseph was sold by his own brothers. Because they, do, they did not recognize the power of God in Joseph. And I tell you something, what the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. That's the same what the, uh, Joseph told his brothers when they were trying to apologize. He said, yes, you've done evil. But let me tell you something, what you meant as evil, God used it to restore the land. God used it to provide for his people. Now, Joseph was, Joseph who was sold as a slave, became, what have you become? Who are you now? And what are you going to be in the future? Are you just going to be a complaining person? Are you just going to be a person without no purpose? Are you going to be a person with no reason to live life? Are you going to be a person living a life just because you are alive? Or are you going to live a life of significance? A life that is worth talking about. A life that people are going to point back and say, this person did that. This person did that. This person. A life of greatness. Who are you? What have you become since you received Christ? As for me, my life has become free. My life has become free of judgment, free of condemnation, free of punishment. And I'm living a life worthy. Some people, when they see me to this on the pulpit, 
they give God glory. Why? Because me, myself, I never expected myself being a minister of the gospel. That when God told me, I read, you will never reign. I wanted to reign. I want to be a superstar. I wanted to do anything that would make me high. When I was a, a teenager, when I was my, a, a young adulthood, I wanted to reign. Then as those thoughts were going to my mind, what kind of business venture am I going to go in? What kind of education am I going to go in? What kind of uh, a career am I going to have to announce me to the top? To give me a name, a whole name, make name. The Lord told me, my daughter I reign. You will never reign except through me. I never understood what God was telling me. Because I never knew my identity as his child. I never know the opportunity I have in God. I never know the blessing that he has for me. I never understood it. That when he began to pour his love upon me, he opened my eyes to the grace message. He said, before you think you're unworthy, before you think you can walk on your own salvation, before you think you can walk, up, walk yourself to the top, that I am telling you now, ask me and I will direct your path. Surrender your life to me and I will lead you to the highest position. And I tell you, the reason why Christ came is being seen in my life today. The reason why Christ came, he came for somebody like me. Somebody who lacked purpose to live. Somebody who lacked that. Somebody who has no meaning of life. Somebody who does not know the identity. Christ came for me. He was born for me during this Christmas. I recognize it very well because this is the beginning of my freedom. When baby Jesus and man were born with us came into the earth, I become a free person because I acknowledge it. When you went to the cross, I received a life of freedom. I received a new life. My old self died with him. And I was made new in Christ Jesus. So I urge each and every one of us here today. Look down memory lane. See where God has brought you from. What you have become since you recognize Christ. What you have become since you acknowledge your freedom in Christ. Look down memory lane. Are you growing maturely in Christ Jesus or are you still a baby Christian for 10 years, 20 years? Are you allowing Christ to reign in you? There are so many scriptures that if you want to look at how Christ gave his life, this the reason why Christ came, give you an opportunity to reign in life. Gave you an opportunity to stand and testify that you're supreme. Then you live a life of significance. Because if you don't have this, I tell you, you're going away. When Apostle Paul began to acknowledge himself that look at what I have become. Yes, there are people who have been walking the same way with God. The same way with me in God. And I tell you something. God chose me because of his grace, because of his mercy. It's not just because of my own hard work. Those how hard work came because Christ was in me, walking through me, pushing me forward. On my own, I will do the wrong thing. But with God in me, Christ in me, I will do the right thing. Because my action will not be my action. My action will be that of Christ. So that is what the gospel is trying to tell us. It doesn't matter if you're a PhD holder. If you don't have this life in Christ, you don't know who you are, what you've become, where you're coming from. You think your PhD, your master's means something? It doesn't mean a thing. There are people who are reigning to the people who are hiring masters, degree holders, a doctorate degree holders, paying them peanuts. But like those people are not even educated. But they came to the revelation 
of God's grace. His riches and mercy and kindness.